Hey, uh, and welcome to the S um, and have had a chance to listen tactical in my approach to episodes being uh, streamed now on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher. There's plenty of opportunities to be able to listen. I always enjoy bringing them forth to you as um, I would welcome aboard to the SOS. Uh, most of my life, a good portion of my life, I have spanned between professional beauty, wellness, and some healthcare. Um, I've been in the financial industry. I um, And now it seems like the majority of is um, business strategy uh, are some strategy, marketing and education are the areas that we focus on each um, a particular topic is in on sales every fifth week. I'm going to, you know, from there, I'm going to focus in on operations and we're, we got to get down and dirty with this, you guys, because we've got to figure out a tagline for this particular podcast is building brands that survive while developing people that thrive. We progress along and I intend to do that. It's, um, it's been important for me to come now. I am starting to look for guests and I do want you to hear from more people. And I want you to hear from more people that specialize in our exes. Again, we've got to start building our brands for them to be able to survive. Business needs you to grow first. Okay. Point. And everything is kind of a clean slate to some degree as well. So our topic today is ruin is a gift. Now I'd be curious how many of you know that line is a gift out of the movie. Um, Julie Roberts as the lead, um, person who's portraying Liz Gilbert, the road to transformation. And if you think about that, but typically what happens is that we cycle through stages in our life and then eventually they stop working for us. Now it could be um, culture has changed, but it could also be partly that kind of thing this way. It's not working for me anymore. You found that you see patterns in your life. Like now you're old enough or mature enough or experienced in my life that now I can say it's not outside circumstances that are creating these problems for me, being these circumstances. And when you can look at it objectively, when you can really look at ruin or internal struggle or a, but now that I am aware of it, now that I see it, now I can chast it. Now I can find solutions for it. Okay. So this is the, why ruin is the road to transformation. Never before in the history of my life and many others that are in the same boat here, have we seen something so um, catastrophic as we have um, over the last 10 and 20 years. So 20 years being 9-11, like even even after watching everything happen on the 20th anniversary, uh, rereading some of the, the things that have happened, watching the video footage of what happened, you know, planes going into a building, um, you know, how we handled it as a country, it, it still is shocking to me. And, it, and it's still unbelievable to me that that happened and that we lived through it. And I saw this one meme that said, you know, I... I want to go back to September 12th, 2001, because that was the day that we came together as a country. That was the day when we looked at, you know, how we were living our lives and, and, and maybe, you know, living our lives very independently or, or even selfishly um, and not realizing the impact that we have on others. And so we know that 20 years ago, 9-11 changed everything. It changed everything. You know, 10 years later, we had the recession, the 2008, 2010, well, it went from eight to 12. Okay. So eight, it impacted, you know, uh, dot com companies, 10, it started to impact everyday Americans. And by 12, we were, we were, it was catastrophic. We were in a horrible recession. Um, so many people had lost their livelihoods. So many people had lost their homes. Uh, the value of our lives went down, the value of our homes went down. It was it was horrendous, and I know that some areas were far more impacted by this than others. Me be, me being and growing up in Arizona and having real estate, I was greatly impacted. I was greatly impacted to the point that I was homeless, and had to um, you know had to figure this out, had to start all over. So I I definitely see ruin as a gift. I definitely see ruin as a road to transformation. And after those two major events that happened, I realized that I didn't want to live my life in a certain way or that I had been living my life in a certain way and that things kind of were not working that way anymore. And I had to figure this out. And I really had to dive into kind of this whole philosophy of, well, what is transformation, you know? 
what do I need to transform? How do you transform? Because this sounds like very much like a verb in action, but I don't have any how to's in regards to this. I understand why now, but I don't have any how to's. So kind of like, you know, defined transformation is a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. And it starts with awareness. So right now, here we are 20 years later from 9-11, 10 years later from, you know, the, the, the depth of the recession. And as a country, we're still struggling. We're divided. We're angry. We're pissed off. Um, we're fearful for sure. Um, and we don't have a lot of control of what we're doing. And small businesses, of course, have been greatly impacted and any business that's in the beauty and wellness sector has been greatly impacted too. Now, fortunately, we have the opportunity to come back around. Fortunately, I'm seeing businesses, you know, rise to the occasion. Fortunately, I'm seeing businesses that have had their best months ever being in business. Okay. And so this is why operations, the, con the, the conversation around operations today is so vital because if you want to kind of continue to grow and transform, we have to be able to make sure that our foundation is in place and that we're ready to do that. So it starts with awareness. Transformation starts with awareness. And when we start with awareness, we can actually then see, are we creating these patterns of trying to remain the same and not helping us to grow or prosper? Or are we allowing ourselves to be the caterpillar and transform into the butterfly? Now, do you think that the caterpillar knows consciously that he is supposed to, you know, wallow up in his cocoon and just be still for a certain amount of time only to rise again, come out again as a butterfly? If he does, great, then his DNA is telling him these are all the things that he's supposed to do. So that's like the true definition, of course. It's, it's the most, it's the best example of transformation is that a caterpillar can become a butterfly. But we also have the opportunity to create this amazing transformation. And even though it starts with awareness, Sometimes we need the support to be able to help us not only be aware, but find those resources to help us get to that next level. And, you know, today we're going to talk about it from an operational standpoint and a small business standpoint. OK, so you guys know that the, the podcast is always in alignment with, you know, strategic opportunities for success. If we can really look deep at things, can we see where the problems lie? Can we see solutions and where the problems lie? And that's kind of this, this, this point of strategic opportunity for success. Now, I also heard this um, statement one time from a keynote speaker that I had been working with. And he said that culture will eat strategy for lunch every day. And I remember thinking, what does that mean? Like there's more meaning to that than I ever thought. And there is a lot of truth to that. So if you think about it, even from just kind of like society today, the culture of our society is very uh, fearful. The culture of our society is um, divided, right, wrong, left, right, blue, red, you know, it's black, white, it's, it's got all these variables on there. And we have to be able to then say how much, no matter how much strategy we kind of expect our leaders to apply, the culture of where we're at might still dictate strategy. So we have to be able to sometimes when we're looking at that, that ruin is a gift, sometimes ruin becomes the culture that we're sitting in. And then we have to think not just add strategy to make things different, but we have to be able to look at what's the culture that I need to align with first in order to change it. You can't resist culture. Strategy is, is sometimes a band-aid to culture. So we have to be able to look at it. And again, you're always going to look at it from the culture of, are you a business that has, that is culturally strong in sales? You know, is it comfortable for people to be doing sales? Are you in a business or even in an industry where operations are uh, kind of a, a high level priority to success? And I would say from the beauty industry standpoint, no. Operations is not a high level strategy for success. Creativity is a high level strategy for success, but not operations. Mindset, you know, 
is mindset a, a strategy for success? Um, or is or do we have a cultural mindset that is preventing us from being successful? Okay, is marketing, um, you know, up there? It, it, the, we understand, and I think that there's a strong culture of marketing, but I think, unfortunately, it's it's skewed. It's skewed from well, this is the way I used to do it, and it worked. To you know, now I'm being forced to do things that I'm not comfortable doing, say like social media or putting yourself out there or videotaping yourself, things like that. And I'm not comfortable doing it. So I'm, I'm not going to get the results out of it, but it culturally seems to be how other people are becoming successful in doing it this way. And then of course, education, I think education is definitely a culture for success in our industry, but I also think that it lacks, it lacks strategy in order for it to really be a powerful asset for you. So today we're going to focus in on the operations part because I feel like that is one of the weakest areas that we are as an industry and as a business. So what does the road to ruin look like? Right. Now, two weeks ago, I did a podcast and it was called Piss Poor Planning Provides Poor Performance. And it was based on kind of being an emotionally intelligent leader. And so the, the scale of emotional intelligence is emotional awareness, emotional management, emotional connection, and then becoming an emotional leader. And when you can say that you are emotionally strong, you probably have a great awareness of not only the culture that exists, but the strategy that needs to be applied. That would be somebody that's an emotionally intelligent leader, really being able to balance both of those things. And then last week I spoke and it was um, more tied to sales and it was called speak into the wind. And sometimes we have to shout really, really loud. And sometimes it feels like we're shouting and nobody's listening to us. But from a sales perspective, we have to sometimes consistently be putting ourselves out there in order for sales to start being a culturally strong action and a strategic that has a strategic result, okay? So we talked about it from brand awareness, brand management, brand connection, and being a brand leader. And when you can have that part of it set up um, as a foundational piece, sales can become a very easeful way of having a strong, solid business. But today we're gonna talk about it from the emotion or the operational side. So. Are we operationally aware of where our business is at? Are we operationally managing the good, the bad, the ugly? Are we operationally connecting with what needs to be done? And would that kind of put us in the space of being an operational leader? Now, I recently did a survey uh, to a group of people, small group of people, but a group of people that also are um, uh, very connected to a very large group of industry people. And in that survey, um, you know, and asking them some of these things, operations was somewhat of a weakness that they felt was happening in our industry. And, and part of that is that bigger businesses um, are being put to the test because of the pandemic and smaller businesses are being popping up and being created. Independent suite type environments are popping up and being created, but they are not operationally strong to expand, grow, survive in the long run. Okay, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So let's look at kind of the first layer of this, um, of operational awareness. You know, is fear dictating your ability to see the truth? Are you afraid to change the culture? Because it's kind of like that, that, added, that adage of don't rock the boat. Like things are already crazy. Things are already unstable. Don't rock the boat, okay? And if fear is dictating your ability to see the truth, then you're falling into one of these three areas. You are either fighting, which means resisting. You are being flight, flight or flighty, which means you're refusing, or you are freezing, which means you're remaining in place. And if you're doing any one of those three things, then what's happening is you're, you might be ignoring the leaks in your boat. You might be ignoring uh, the, the uh, iceberg around the corner, okay, or within your path here. So you have to be able to kind of say, you know, I can't, I, I, I can't, uh, the energy that I'm exerting to kind of maintain things at this point is costing me too much. 
And I, I really have to look and say, am I resisting, refusing, or remaining, trying to remain things, keep things remaining the same? And any one of those is a reason to look a little bit deeper into yourself as an operational leader. Okay. Are you devoting time to it? Do you have a plan to reboot a strategy to mine more? And I'm, and I mean, mine, like dig deeper to where the problems exist, how to be able to find the answers to what you think might help your business grow, you know, and, and you're going to hear mining as a word a lot uh, today with, you know, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and all of this stuff, because it's like they're mining um, to be able to find these, this, this supposed cryptocurrency that's out there. It's a very interesting concept. I'm, I'm learning more and more about it. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see when mainstream, you know, America, mainstream USA uh, is going to start taking cryptocurrency as a form of uh, exchange, currency exchange over the dollar. And I think it's, I think you're going to see that. I think we're definitely going to see that sooner than we think in there. Um, and then of course, do you have operational awareness of solid values that you hold true to? Okay. Because this is where that culture and strategy conversation comes back into. And, you know, that ruin, you know, is there enough ruined right now that you feel like it's beyond repair? And yet you're still showing up every day and, and trying to fix the leak holes. Um, you're still showing up every day. And, and if the engine's not working, you're pulling out the paddle. All right. So what are the values that you hold true in your operational awareness? What are the expectations that you're not willing to negotiate in how you're running your business from an operational standpoint? Now, we all know that there's no way that Amazon could have gotten as big as they did and expand the way they did and have all of us be buyers of them the way they did if they didn't have operational excellence. They had to keep looking deeper into the systems. They had to keep advancing the systems. They had to keep looking at a strategy. The minute something didn't work or the minute the, the client demand of something got bigger, they had to figure out a strategy in order to serve that demand. And right now, you know that we're in a supply and demand issue. So we are in uh, low supply of workers and high supply of clients. And clients are not only demanding our time, they're also demanding more than that, okay? Um, they're, they, they're, they're kind of acting like they're in the driver's seat here, you know, like they can call up and cancel or no show or, um, you know, have these expectations of what we are capable of doing within the, the guidelines of, of our type of businesses. So Amazon is operationally excellent. And they will continue to do that. I mean, listen, all these billionaires that are running these very well operationally driven companies are all putting rockets in the sky right now because somehow that's more important to them, but they created a level of success. So what are you going to have to do to get your rocket in the sky? Okay. What do you have to do in order to get your business to be running as a, as a, a sound operationally excellent business. And it starts with awareness, but then it leads to management. So this is a bit of an exercise here. So if you're driving, I want you to, you know, uh, say it out loud or somehow maybe set your, you know, if you have this running through um, your phone, um, but, you know, or, or you can get a piece of paper and everything, I want you to write down things. I want you to list the top five things that bring you in money. Okay, because we're going to we're going to look at really if we're operationally sound, we got to be very clear of where our revenues are coming from. Okay, What are the top five things that are bringing you in money? And what I don't want you to do from the start is that first, I want you to look at multiple revenue streams. So one revenue stream would be services. Another revenue stream would be uh, in-house retail. Maybe a third revenue stream is online retail sales. Okay. Maybe a fourth one is gift cards. Okay. Look, don't look at it like, well, hair coloring or highlighting is our, you know, brings me in money plus haircutting. Don't look at it as a category. 
you know, dissecting the category like that. Look at it as, you know, that main, main categories, service, retail, online retail, gift cards. I want you to look at the things that potentially bring you in money. Okay. And if you only have two of them right now, then you only have two of them. Okay. Then you'd want to break that down a little bit more and say within those two, what is, what's bringing in the most money for me? Or you might want to look at, do you need a third and a fourth revenue stream in order to survive? Okay. Now we call ourselves salons and in, you know, or spas, okay. Or lash lounges or whatever that is that you do. We call ourselves these particular types of things. So it creates a very specific uh, and almost too defined directive. And then what happens is that we don't think that we have the ability to cross over or expand. You know, I know some major salons that have cafes in, in their businesses. So maybe cafe is, is a revenue generator for you. Okay. Maybe you have, maybe it could be under retail, but maybe it's not professional product retail. That is your revenue. Maybe you'd have gifts, candles, jewelry, um, other things like that, other accessory things like that, that bring you in money outside of traditional beauty products. Okay. Those would all be things that I want you to look at. And I want you to think about how many revenue streams do you have? Now I want you to go over to the other side of the list. And I want you to write the top five things that cost you money. Okay. What's costing you money for your business? Now, these are very, these can be very traditional things that of course you have to have in order to run your business. So typically you would go right off the top and you'd say payroll, right? So paying employees. And um, maybe the second thing would be is supplies, right? Cost of goods and supplies. Um, maybe the third thing would be, you know, a uh, uh, front desk staff because because they're non-revenue producing um, employees. So you have revenue producing employees and non-revenue producing employees. Um, maybe one of the other things that's costing you um, a lot more money, maybe you have very high rent where you're located, all right? Um, and, you know, there could be other things that are costing you money, but look at the top five things that are costing you money, all right? Now, at this point, you have, you can look at this piece of paper, this chart, and you could say, I have awareness. I have awareness. Maybe you don't have the answers. Maybe you don't have the solutions yet to be able to kind of say, I need to expand, grow, or, you know, uh, my business. But you now have the awareness. So I want you to re review your list of five and five. And I want you to look at areas that are vital, okay? So these would be considered fixed. In other words, they're fixed expenses. And I don't mean fixed, you know, yes, like a, like a profit and loss statement, you know, yes, like a, a balance sheet, fixed, you know, um, over not. I want you to look at it as, I have to have employees in order to provide the services that I do. So your employees are the actual people that do the services. So that becomes very fixed, okay? Then I want you to look at areas that are flexible, all right? What's it costing you? Is it flexible? Is there ways to expand it, grow it, invest in it? Or is there ways that you can reduce the cost of goods that it's, that it's um, putting out? at this point, okay? And then the third area is I want you to look at what are areas of financial ruin? What are things that you're spending money on that you don't need to be spending money on? Or what are things that you've already spent money on and now it just seems to be a waste? So it could be that maybe you have a, a very diverse retail um, on your shelves and some things have been sitting there for a really long time. So you might want to run a, a list of your, you know, top 20 retail products and then look or, you know, top, top to bottom retail list. And I am pretty sure any one of your, um, uh, any one of your software uh, companies and software uh, processes that you have will be able to run this list. But what you want to look at is you want to look at the bottom 20. Okay. What's on the bottom 20 that you're not selling that many of, or you're not selling enough on. And then you have to be able to determine, is it costing you? Is it creating financial ruin to have them on your shelf? Is it creating financial ruin to, you know, to, to think that they're selling, but then they're actually not. Maybe another area of financial ruin is your front desk. Are there ways to be able to streamline your front desk um, to be able to do that? Maybe um, a financial ruin is 
something that you haven't invested in. So if you're a small business or a sweet business, maybe you haven't invested in the right type of software and what it's creating is an inability for clients to get hold of you or maybe an ability for clients to contact you 24 seven. And what you don't have is good operational strategies in place to be able to do that. So maybe you need to invest in something in order to make it work for you so you don't go into financial ruin down the road, okay? So here's some examples of what could be on your five and five list. Supplies, um, awareness of that. Managing, are you aware, are you managing and connected to your inventory? Have you really looked at maybe the inventory that you're using in the back and the inventory that you're using in the front? Is there opportunities to diminish waste? Is there opportunities to maybe streamline the products that are big sellers or cross promote items that are not in order to get them in the hands of more clients, okay? Your payroll, is there flex here on payout? Or does it require you to increase your sales? In other words, if you're sitting at a payroll that and you're compensating your employees in a particular way, is there a new way to maybe compensate them? Um, or are you in a position that you're forced to have to increase sales in order to offset a high level of payroll? Okay. Um, front desk, what is your front desk costing you? Are there solutions? Um, that you could do in order to streamline the cost of a front desk, all right? And there's so much technology out there. There's so much AI. There's so many software opportunities out there that there's lots of ways to be able to do it. Now, it might mean investing in some of these types of programs or applications, but in the long run, it might bring you in money and or save you money on there. So you want to be able to look at both of those things. Are, are there any solutions in these three areas that you can expand and contract in, in order to be able to help you be more operative? Not only do you have to have the awareness, you have to have the management and you have to be able to connect with solutions to be able to have you be more successful. But as an individual leader yourself, you have to be able to look at the timer method. And you've, you've all, you've, if you haven't heard me say this before, you'll hear me say it again next time but it's time, money, energy, and resources. Are you willing to devote more time to operations and mining new approaches, okay? What money is available to add more value and what money can you reduce to add to the bottom line, okay? How will you create a balance of what's important to you? So your time, do you have money to invest or look for ways to save money? How much energy are you putting out there that it's costing you and then of course you know what are your resources to be able to do that well i want to let you guys know that that I, honestly i'm one of your resources okay we're going to look at all of this stuff you work with me as a coach we're going to look at all of this stuff and put together a strategy that's going to allow you to be able to say i'm more aware i am more i am managing my business better i am more connected to what's happening in my business from culture to strategy so that I can be that really awesome leader, okay? So when you, when you take action on resources to help you get the business that you desire and the life that you love, isn't that what we all want, okay? Isn't that what we all want? When are you gonna do that? When are you gonna finally say, I need, I need to figure out how to be able to get the help? And, and a lot of people say, oh, I don't have the finances to hire a coach. Well, if you don't have the finances to hire a coach, you don't have a business that will survive. I'm sorry, it's true. You will find the resources, you will find the money. We will mine for that money in working with a coach. And not just me, any coach in this industry, I think is gonna provide some kind of value for you. So if you've been following somebody that you're like, you know what, maybe I should finally pick up the phone or jump in or call them or get an appointment set up with them, do it. Okay, do it. You will find the money. In all times in my life where I had the least amount of money, I invested money in me to learn and grow what it was going to take in order for me not to have that, that low balance in my bank account. I did anything I could, which meant that I invested in it. Now, I've invested in it. I used credit cards. I borrowed money from family to be able to uh, in, you know, do these type of bigger project investments in myself. And they've always provided me a return on my investment, always. And each and every year, I look at an area of opportunity that I need to invest in again, and I make that investment. And I continue to keep growing my business from that point. So I want you to have the business you desire, but I want you to have the life that you love. 
And when those two things can be, you can say that you have both of those things, then I know you're doing some things right. Okay. But if you don't have both of those things and you can confidently and with integrity say that you have that, then I'm your resource. Okay. I am your resource right here. And I would love to be able to work with you. And how I work with my clients is to be able to bring them in kind of like under the SOS salon coaching program. So even if you're not a salon, I want you to, I'll remove the word salon, SOS coaching. Okay. Because I don't want you to think that it's just a traditional hair salon. It's a small business from that point, because, because there's a lot of similar strategies in that. Now, obviously I cater to beauty, wellness, and health. Um, within my genre here. That's, that's, where I, that's where I cater to. That's where I want to devote my time to. But if you happen to be outside of that, I'm, I'm happy and willing to be able to have that conversation with you. Now, in most cases, we manage all of these five keystones in this area of this coaching type of program. And in some cases, I have to refer you out to my other business, which is Brand Me Marketing and Branding Agency. And when I'm referring you out to that particular business, it means that I'm referring you to resources that are more that provide more expertise than I can. So that would be people that understand maybe website development. Maybe uh, you're looking for a social media strategist. Maybe you need a virtual assistant. Maybe you need somebody to help you with SEO, okay? Maybe you need somebody to help you with ads. Like I have resources to all of these people. And at that point, I refer you out to the experts in these particular fields. So you have great opportunity to be able to work with me. We look to see where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. And then we put that strategy together to say, here's how we're going to solve this. Here's how we're going to get you to grow. Okay. And I think that you'll find that it's um, a pretty powerful experience and provides that level of transformation that you're looking for. Now, here's two ways that you can always kind of stay in touch with me. So maybe you're not ready to jump on and, and have a coach. Okay. So you can go back to any of my blogs, go to my website, bonniebonadeo.com, click on blog. And you can read any of the blogs and they're going to provide you an enormous amount of support and, and be resourceful to you to start learning and be aware of maybe these areas of opportunities. And then, of course, I do a lot of programs that are very uh, uh, reasonably priced or, you know, uh, free in some cases. And these programs are designed to be able to kind of tap into one of those areas that you might be better at being more operationally excellent in, or maybe a better marketer in, maybe a better salesperson in. So the one that I have coming up is going to fall into that marketing category. So it's called the staging method. And honestly, it's how to create content, how to market content, how to deliver content. So if you are struggling with how to be able to market your business, maybe you need to hire new people and you can't find them. Maybe you need new clients and you can't find them. Then the staging method is a formula. It's, a, it's, a, it's an approach to being able to develop the right kind of content and to be able to successfully put it out there. Okay. So join me on October 4th from 6 to 8 p.m. for that workshop. And um, you'll have a great understanding of it. It's also, it's for salon owners and sweet people, but it's also geared towards educators too. So if you're trying to be an educator in the industry and you're looking at how to be able to develop and create that content, okay? Because that's, that's really what I hear most of the time. People struggle with, I don't know what to push out there. And um, I, can't, I, don't, I don't have, I'm not creative enough to come up with enough content. And it's not that you're not creative at all. You're just not devoting the time to it. So if you have a strategy in place and you can devote the time to it and you have all these ideas that are coming through, it becomes fun and exciting to be able to put information out there. So listen, don't wait for total ruin. Don't, you know, allow ruin to be this road to transformation for you because at this point, we're all kind of bubbling on the surface of what are we doing? How do we get past this? There's a lot of things that are out of our control. There's a lot of unknowns and there's still a lot of uh, fear around us. And so I want to be able to help you with any and all of those things. So Here's what you guys got to do. As always, go to SOSSaloncoaching.com, click the link, you'll hit my landing page, and there'll be an opportunity for you to do a free session with me. That's a start. That way we can really look at where you're struggling and put a plan together. And if you see it as a good fit, we both see it as a good fit to be able to work together a little bit more, a little bit deeper, and on a little bit of a different level, then we do it. Okay. But ultimately, this free session is to be able to put a strategy together for you with what you're currently struggling with right now. So again, don't wait for total devastation. Allow ruin to be a road to transformation. All right. Thanks for joining me, you guys. I will see you next week. And remember, uh, all of these uh, podcasts are also on YouTube. 
so that you can watch the video and see the PowerPoint, see the information, ab absorb it a little bit better, because I know that video is a better learning tool than audio sometimes. Um, and so I've got all that laid out in a, in a presentation that will help you, and then you can take the time um, to be able to do the work that I ask you to do within the podcast itself. All right. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you guys soon.